to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, I'm Bill Young. Uh, we're in the middle of planning board transition this evening with uh, some new appointments and uh, I'll be the vice chair this evening. We'll call the first uh, project up, Henry Kaufman Campgrounds uh, Master Plan followed by Henry Kaufman Campgrounds Site Plan. Mr. Brenner, would you like to kick it off? Got it, good. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Donald Brenner. I am the attorney for the Kaufman Campgrounds. Uh, we were here uh, about a month ago, at which time the board requested that we go back and make certain improvements to the drawing and also identify all of the facilities which is on the campground. Uh, the engineers have done it. I think we have the map on the board, which um, Troy can explain to you if needed be. And what we're doing here, first we're gonna do the master plan to show what is intended for the whole program. And the second item is going to be, we're gonna move on one section, which would be in the, I guess would be the northwest corner. Uh, I think that for the opening, I think let's go through the comments and then we'll see what we can do. We'll start off with the master plan. We'll do the master plan, that's correct. Mr. Garvey, could you read the uh, correspondence, please? From the Office of Building, Zoning, Planning, Administration, Enforcement, February 16th, Jane Slevin. Slavin. I'm gonna read them all. Master plan, the following must be indicated. Diagrammatically indicate area phases of the work, description of work, and what work is proposed to be done during which time period. Legend indicates a hatch pattern for wetlands, however, the hatch is not shown on the plan. The 100 year floodplain needs to be clear, clear, clearly delineated. Reference to note four is made in the 100 year floodplain. Where, where is note four? Any structures, this is number two, any structures, activity area, or recreation areas that are proposed within the 300 foot buffer will require a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals per section 4.32B camps. Proposed development within the 100 year floodplain is required to meet New York State DEC requirements. A base flood evaluation, excuse me, a base flood elevation must be established when development consists of more than five acres. Applicant must prove that the development will not increase flood elevations at any location during a 100 year flood event. A note shall be provided stating each phase is indicated for structure or structures and site improvement or site improvements require detailed submission for review by the planning board and other agencies and boards. A narrative shall be provided outlining how the proposed structures and site improvements will impact the traffic flow in the surrounding roads and intersections. From the Department of Environmental Management and Engineering, Bruce Peters, there are, there are four comments. From Brooker, drainage calculations have been provided to demonstrate that potential significant impacts with respects to drainage can be mitigated. We therefore recommend that the Henry, Car Cam excuse me, the Henry Kaufman Campground Site Plan be approved for drainage subject to the above project comments, and there are 11. Rock and County Department of Planning, there are 10. Rockland County Sewer District Number One. No future correspondence for the site. 
And then everything else, I believe, has been read into the record. Rob, should I just go right to uh, the site plan, or should I wait? Uh, I think it's just you wait. Okay, fine. Okay. I, I think there was one other comment. I think we got that latest comment from uh, drainage agency saying that we ha had filed the application. From who? From the drainage agency. They asked us to file an application, and we did file an application on some uh, minor projects which were done, and they want, wanted us to do it. We did file an application, and they've informed you that we have done it. I have it here, Mr. Garvey. Uh, notice of receipt from the uh, Rockland County Dra Drainage Agency. Uh, application number for Kaufman Campground. Miscellaneous improvements dated February 28th. Please review the application. It's just a, a confirmation that the application was submitted, correct? Right. Which is what we, they wanted us to do. Very good. That's all we had, Cheryl? Uh, this is up for an amendment to the original uh, planning board decision. Um, PB number 13 23, dated July 24th, 2013. What do we need to do? You might want to ask the uh, applicant to show this is an overall master plan and they made a number of changes when they need to explain it for everybody. Mr. Troy, can you handle it? Sure. <laughs> a lot easier than the last thing. <laughs> Is it Troy? Yeah. Um, Troy Wojciechowski with Stantec. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes first. Okay. Um, for the most part, we, we, we submitted formally what we presented at the last meeting, uh, which you see up on the board right now. Um, we used the color scheme, uh, which I presented at the last, last meeting that we were here. Uh, green being um, replace structures, red are brand new structures, pool, buildings, all the brown is the existing structures, uh, and blue are facilities that will be improved. Um, one of the most important pieces of information I think that we added were all these basically data tables. Um, we have this on our proposed master plan, which you see here, but also on our existing um, plan for the camp. There was a lot of questions, you know, what do you really have on the camp currently? And we really want a, a better description, and basically an inventory of all those structures. So these tables were provided uh, and key, key to each and every building, providing size, use, uh, all that information. Um, this plan includes proposed structures as well, um, proposed dimensions uh, and uses and things like that. Um, that was the biggest uh, piece of information that we added to the plans. Um, for, the, for the master plan, again, we don't have a lot of engineering on this plan, but one thing that we did submit formally was a, a overall conceptual drainage plan. Uh, it, it shows the board and the agencies our scheme, basically, uh, how we propose to address stormwater runoff uh, related to our project. Uh, and it also inclu it will include uh, measures to help some of the existing runoff problems that are, occur historically over, um, over the residential properties on, on the low end of the, of the site. So that was part of our submission, as well as a conceptual stormwater pollution prevention plan. Um, and again, that outlines what we intend to do as we move forward with the individual site plans um, for all the improvements. Um, uh, j just to address some of the comments, if I, if I can, just that were presented for tonight's meeting. Uh, we don't propose any improvements within the floodplains. I, I know that the, the prints came out pretty light as far as delineating the floodplain uh, limits. So we're gonna um, make that more clear on our next, next plan that we submit. But just so the board knows, we're not proposing any improvements in the floodplain. Um, I think that's it, unless there was Hopefully something else. The traffic is going to be pretty much the same. We're, we're not increasing the population in any way. You're going to need to speak into the mic. The traffic is going to be the same. We're not increasing the population in any way of the camp. It'll be the same uh, uh, amount of children being uh, taken at this camp than we've done in prior years. 
And um, pretty much, I think uh, maybe we, maybe the board would be of interest. Uh, there was a, a drainage problem down on the corner. Maybe we want to discuss. We have come up with a thought as to how we're going to handle that. Maybe we should show it to the board now uh, as to what we have in mind. Do you? Sure, we could do that. As, as part of our planning, um, we've actually met with some of the neighbors just to have an open dialogue as we move forward. Um, they've expressed, um, you know, at the last public hearing that they have some existing drainage issues. So we wanted to tackle that head on. So we've met with some of those neighbors um, and, and basically I ran through with the neighbors how we approach drainage and how we would approach um, trying to, to, to mitigate some of the issues they have now. So one thought we have. Can you, sh I'm sorry, can you show us where on the map? Sure. So here's the main entrance, um, Sickletown Road. There's a, runs up this way here. So a lot of the drainage flows. Grab this. A lot of the drainage from the camp flows through these properties, which you can see these are residential lots here, which is a little light on this uh, overhead here. Um, but the only access we actually have to the street, which is out here, is along our entrance here. So a lot of the drainage actually runs uh, over land and collects in uh, basically a drainage swale that runs through some of these neighbors' properties through here. So one way we're gonna we're we're proposing to tackle that is to to capture some of this runoff which is running down through here, catch it and actually direct it through new drainage at our um, our driveway. Okay, this would be a closed pipe system, catch basins, pipes, and. Um, and hopefully in cooperation with the county, um, tie into their existing drainage on Sickletown Road, uh, just near that, that cul-de-sac that's right up here. There's an existing pipe that then sends the water across Sickletown Road um, to the wooded area. Um, we're also proposing stormwater detention basins here uh, in this area, as well as a cutoff swale, which again will, will help to cut off runoff that's currently running through these neighbors' properties there. Um, so that's, you know, kind of our overall plan right now. We're still fleshing it out a bit. Um, but, you know, I think that's an important part of our, our project here. Yeah. We have not detailed it, but we have shown it to Mr. Vizzetti, and he said he will give us permission to go into the county drainage system. So we think that will relieve the problem which exists in that area right now. That was one of the questions that has been asked. Um, Speaking to the mic, oh, please. That, that was one of the questions that had been asked. Right now, the immediate phase one was going to be uh, the next application. However, um, we will give you a program, and if in any way uh, other areas are going to be started, we will accelerate this drainage problem and get that done as part of the improvements. I want to ask that just in general, describe what you're doing now, what the time frame in terms of when you plan on building, whatever, do I have a screen or not? Do we say that? Well, previous um, application showed quadrants on the plan. Right. Just submission didn't have those quadrants. That's why I made that comment. There was four phases. Yeah, our, our first submission really only included the first phase for the Bronx House area, which we'll talk about that application next. But that's this, this area right over here, which is the only part of the camp on the west side of the brook that runs through, runs through the camp. Um, so we'll, we'll discuss that next. The other phases really weren't phases that are indicated on the, the plan. The camp is, is broken into different agencies that use, use the camp. Um, and so, for instance, 92nd Street Y is this area, um, 12 Trails, this area, Sunrise. So they're actually not phases, but they're agencies or groups that use the camp. So we've had discussions with UJA, the applicant, um, about really trying to identify phasing, because as an engineer, I would like to see phasing 
let's do this second, let's do this third, let's do this fourth. There's some issues with that um, as far as the funding w within the agencies. You know, imagine being this agency here and being last on the list as far as phasing goes. So what we anticipate and which uh, UJA is, is going to work with us to figure out at least a tentative plan is um, the phases are probably going to be a, a couple buildings here, a couple buildings here, a couple buildings here is the next phase. So it's not going to be one area of the camp. So somehow we're going to have to put that into engineering plans that, you know, you guys can, can approve, you know, but that's how we foresee the phasing going. It's, it's not going to be, you know, one section of the camp. It's going to be a little bit here, here, and here for the next phase, a little bit here, here, and here for the subsequent phases. And, and we're going to try to identify that and, and probably, again, use color-coded plans to at least give you a, a tentative phasing. And, and the phasing, as far as the timing goes, is really dependent on funding. Uh, they have a certain amount of funding already in place. So, you know, I think the current program is over the next three years or so to implement this master plan. But again, it's subject to the, to the financing. So you, basically, you come back for each of those other operating. You're here just now for the one on the west side. The one Correct. The other Correct, yeah. All right, public portion? No, us. So, oh, uh, all right, we'll go through the board members now. Mr. Garvey, you have any questions or comments? Gene, um, when they came here back in, uh, I guess, December, right? Is that right? Yeah. You were, they had done some work on some project on some of these buildings, which is why you asked them to come here. Now, where are we with that? Okay. But by the way, for the record, we're, they're going to take that application away and they're going to leave it as sheds. They will no longer use it that way. The application is being withdrawn and it will stay as sheds, which we have a C of O for. Correct. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Young. Mr. Dell? Yes, thank you. Uh, a number of quick questions. First of all, um, Ms. Slavin, are you... Uh, feel comfortable with the amount of uh, compliance with all of your previous objections to move this forward? Yes, I do. I, again, would really like to see what the proposed phasing would be. And with any type of development of this scale, there is going to be basically a business plan where how are we going to attack this and when we expect the funding to come through and what projects are going to be done and what years. Thank you very much. You've answered a lot of my questions. Uh, Mr. Magrina, do you see any legal impediments to this proceeding? Well, no. This, the purpose of this current application is the, um, the master plan to get an idea of I understand. what the future is. Um, so I think compared to when they first came in, it's, it's a lot more than when they originally came in. So legally, no. It's, this is just proving a, a, an overall plan so that when they come in, it's should be consistent with this. Yeah. That's why we're treating them separately when they do the Bronx House. If you approve the Bronx House, fine, and then move on. Okay. Um, are there any variances needed for this application? I don't believe so. I think they indicated that they were outside the floodplain. Okay. Um, outside the, the floodplain is one issue. Um, they're within the 300 foot buffer for some of the right. structures, which you can see, but those require variances from our local board. On the site. Um, and there are some areas Okay. Is there any construction proposed in this phase within the buffer areas? Yes, there is. Troy, can you point to me? Sure. 
this the heavy dash line is the 300 foot buffer here. Okay, so um, this is an existing building that's in the buffer that we're replacing, but we're, we're replacing it with a, a slightly larger building. Uh, this is a new pool area that's also within the buffer. Um, and then we also have a proposed uh, ball field in this area, which is a little washed out on the, the screen. Uh, so we do have a, a couple features that we'll have to receive variances for. All right. Um, we've looked at this a number of times. Obviously, it's like a campus type situation. It's a very, very large property. Um, I still question about any development as a general principle within the buffer areas, but I think that should obviously be referred to uh, ZBA. And assuming when it comes back, will we have a chance if to possibly recommend screening or anything, if if that's so needed? So we have to come back with this is just in general. We have to come back with any kind of development back to the board, and at okay. that time we'll have a detailed design. All right. At this time, that's all my questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dell. Mr. Sweeney. Thank you. Um, Mr. Garvey may have asked this, so pardon me if I'm repeating it, but I just have a question. Going back to December meeting, I know Jane's uh, comment number eight talked about outstanding violations. Has that, been, has that what you answered before? Are those been cleared up or are you in the talks about those? Well, I was just that, by, uh, Mr. Brenner, that they're going to withdraw that okay. application to take the sheds and make them into occupied space. So I thought they were pre- <laughs> I thought there were pre-existing violations. I didn't realize they were new ones. Okay. Well, they, they were violations that were issued prior to the application coming in. Okay. In December. So they looked at the option of if they apply for a permit to take what were permanent sheds to have them be uh, a space for the public and then they would be for human occupancy. Okay. So by going back to sheds, it's all just clean. We're starting from scratch with that. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, next question. I just want to make sure something you said about um, the drainage. So you're in talks with Orange Town about having the, the drainage continue into the Orange Town drainage, or you just or you have got any commitments from them that that's okay? I, I'm, uh, could you be a little clearer well, on the you, question? Well, you said you would, you were your plan that you're talking about for the new drainage to solve that problem would rely on tapping into the existing Orange Town. No, Rockland, Rockland County. Rockland, Rockland County. So and Rockland Mr. County Vizzetti, Mr. Vizzetti said he would permit it. Yeah, so you have confirmation that that's we, we had a verbal confirmation when we met him. In fact, we were going to a different basin, and Mr. Vizzetti said, I think you should go to the one to, I guess it was the north. And uh, we look, was looked in the field, and he was right. That's the one we're going to connect it into. Right, so that would be an important part of this. and. Uh, I had one more. Oh, just, I just need some clarification. So the first thing we're doing is the master plan. And then when we move on this, we'll talk about the site plan for what's phase one, roughly. So I think back to Jane's question, like, we're talking about a master plan when there really isn't a defined master plan yet. There isn't really a set of what's happening where and when. So how can we really discuss a master plan where it's, it's contingent upon so many different things that haven't happened yet? Well, I think it's further along, this plan certainly shows where they plan on putting items. Okay. And just like the master plan, it can change, yeah. they have to come back and change the master plan if they change anything from this. Well, I got the feeling you'd want like a time, like a, a estimated well, time that could change. There's nothing even to change yet because it's not there. I feel comfortable letting you move forward and reviewing the process and trying to come up with the So if the, if the master plan does get approved, it would, we expect it to be amended as things go on. It would be preliminary. 
Oh, it'd be preliminary. Okay. 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 So it'd be preliminary for a long time. Right. Okay. The last submission was so preliminary okay. that we couldn't decipher what was existing, what was proposed, and the drainage information wasn't there. So oh. this is a more complete application. Right. Okay, that clears it up. Thank you. That's all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Mandel. Yeah, the prior uh, members have asked the questions I want answered, and I think uh, my other questions would be more suited, like the uh, easements uh, would be more suited for uh, the site plan, I think. Yeah, you have, you know. Oh, no, I can ask it now then. Uh, the uh, sewer easement. No, it's just uh, with the uh, sewer easement that runs through it, are they going to be building on top of it? I know we have, there's a parking area on top of it now. I guess maybe it's better for the site plan. seems that there might be. Uh, on the Bronx House? It's in the, yeah, it's maybe yeah, it's, it's in the Bronx House. Yeah, okay, then I'll wait for the Bronx House plan on that question. Thank you. Do, do you have any questions, Mr. Young? I have no questions. Uh, you've had adequately. Uh, answered my lingering questions from the December meeting. Uh, we'll open it up to the public portion. Uh, anybody would like to speak? You'll have three minutes to speak. Uh, and, uh, please come up to the microphone, play, uh, state your name and uh, your residence. Uh, where is the... My name is Robert Beers. I live at 81 Sickertown Road. The mailing address is Orangeburg. We, my wife and I have been taxpayers in the town of Orangetown since 1956. We have resided at 81 Sickertown Road for a little over 35 years. As the Coffin Campgrounds was expanding, and when they did need a permit to come from, I would be before that board and explain that their water drainage floods the back of our property to no extent. We have been numerous pictures, numerous diagrams, numerous meetings. To this point, nothing has happened. I have a drainage ditch around the back of our property that wasn't there in the beginning, but I think that's four feet wide, four feet deep, and that goes around the back of our property and down the side of our driveway. Naturally, I've had to improve drainage to accept all this water. The one encouraging note that we have had two weeks ago, Copland Campgrounds had a meeting with the, with the taxpayers on Sickletown Road, of which I was there too. They did mention this drainage ditches. I don't know what kind of a ditch or what kind of a basin they're planning. This was full of trees in the back. If we're gonna catch all this water, what are we gonna do with it if that drainage basin fills up? If someone wishes to see the extent of this water, we're gonna have a rain tomorrow into Friday. I can guarantee you I will have water flowing around that house and down onto Sickletown Road. They did, they were a little bit in compliance with us in saying what our thoughts were. As far as a drainage basin, I do not believe in that because I can just hold so much water and do so much damage to trees. What are we gonna do, take all these trees down? I would like to see that water piped they have an outlet in their own driveway, but they would have to catch this water and pipe it, and it might be better off for the residents. I'm 85. I would like to see something happen to this, really. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak, please? Hi, 
Hi, I'm Loretta Stephen. I live on 25 McKinley Street, along near the um, Bronx Houses uh, area. I just had a question about what exactly you're going to do in the buffer zone. Are you going to be taking down all the trees because that will also be a drainage problem and for all the homes that are along that area, uh, it, it will increase the sound of all the uh, noise from the campgrounds and um, it will certainly affect the area. That's all. Thank you. We should have uh, a lot of those questions answered uh, during the site plan portion of the uh, project, which will be following up this. <clears throat> Anyone else care to speak? Make a motion to close the public portion. Mr. Garvey placed the motion. Mr. Mandel second. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Magrino? No. Uh, would you like to address the buffer situation, Mr. Burner? Well, I, I just would like to put them to, to, I know Mr. Pierce, I think that his name, please understand we are going to be piping the water away, but there may be some basins that have to be built based on federal regulation that you have to now treat some of the storm water. So some basins may have to be built and overflow from these basins go into the pipe system. So there are regulations here which have to be followed by federal rules, but we are not the water that he's talking about will be taken away. He will not, and it will be piped away. So that, that I think, is a plus. Uh, about the other comment, that will come up when we do the Bronx House. Will it be piped down the driveway? Yes. It will? Yes. And on to the county system. And the buffer situation? Uh, the buffer situation, we, I, we'd have to look at each one independently, in other words, if we're in the buffer, we must get a variance for it. So in other words, when we develop each section, we will have to go, go to your board and then go to the zoning board and get the variances for the, what we believe buffers, uh, variances that are needed. First uh, up will be the Bronx House. So that's correct. That's correct. Uh, if you care to shed any light on that. Well, can we talk well, we about get that? After we get oh, we can talk about it. OK. Yeah. So we need a motion for a preliminary. No, lead agency. Sorry. Motion for lead agency. I make, I make the motion for lead agency. Mr. Carr. Mr. Mendel seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion, motion for, for Neg Deck. Second. Garvey Mendel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, preliminary with conditions. Motion for preliminary with conditions. Okay, so. Uh, you have Jane's seven, Bruce Peters four, Rooker's eleven, Rockland County Planning ten. Uh, should we go with the rest of them that are in right? Well, I think the plans were revised. So. Okay, so I'm, but so should I not read into Rockland County Health? Oh no, Rockland County Health. Yeah. So Rockland County Health has one. And then that's all I have, Cheryl. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, and also the, uh, the drainage, the drainage application. application. That's it, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Dell. Okay, Rock and County Sewer said they don't want to have any problem. They don't have any issues, right? They didn't. They don't have any conditions. They said, "Don't talk to us again." <laughs> You had a question, Mr. Dell? Yeah, I personally think it might be useful to stay in there, even though we've heard it, to stay in this portion that site disturbances in the buffer areas uh, will be uh, as minimal as possible. We're going, to, that effect, right? we're going we'll to get to that at site, at site plan. No, I know that, but. We'll get to it at site plan. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Sweeney seconds. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 to the site plan, Mr. Brenner. Yes. Pete. Uh, the, as we had mentioned, now that we've gotten past this stage, we can now go into each phase, which we want to develop and actually construct at the end or the start of the, the end of next, this year's season. There will be construction work program for September of 2018. This is one of the areas we are looking at um, Again, these, are de these were detailed. Uh, I think after we read the comments, we'll be able to discuss them and see what we can do with it. Okay. Um, you're okay, right? Uh, you're okay. Scarby, wanna? Yeah. Begin reading the PRC the, uh, has no additional comments beyond the comments submitted by other agencies for the project. For the record, it's PB number 17-59. From the Office of Building Zoning Plan Administration Enforcement. There are five comments. From the Department of Environmental Management and Engineering, Town of Orange Town, Bruce Peters. There are 15 comments. From Brooker Engineering. Drainage calculations have been provided to demonstrate that potential significant impacts with respect to drainage can be mitigated. We therefore recommend that the Henry Kaufman Campground site plan be approved for drainage subject to the above project comments, and there are 11. From the Rockland County Department of Planning, there are 14. From the Rockland Center of, of Environmental Health, there are two. From the Rockland County Highway Department, there are eight. The there is County a letter County. from the Rockland County Drainage dated uh, November 29, 2017, stating that you will, you are, it's a written formal notice that you were in violation of the Rockland County Stream Control Act. The RCDA is hereby requesting the Town of Orangetown Municipal Departments to take immediate action to prevent any adverse impact resulting from violation to any other property owners and not to accept the site conditions until the RCA, RCDA notify that all violations have been, ab been abated or pit permit files are closed. Okay, I think you're reading the wrong, look at the date on that thing. November 29, 2017. They've done one now on February 26th. In 26. other words, since we filed the application, they've now written a different one where they're saying, we're gonna require you to give us an application. This is the one from February 28th? Okay. Email. No, email. 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 Right? The okay. email references the November 29th letter. Right, the, e the email from February 26th, two days ago, references the November 29th letter, which is what I was reading. Correct, but if you, if you read the February 20th, the, the 29th email said we filed the application which took care of the open violation. This one says Rockland County Drainage Agency is telling the boards that they must, we must get an application for these applications and it further says if you read the last sentence okay so the rcda has not received the permit application proposed indicating the referral is required by the rock and county stream control act please have the applicant submit a stream control act permit application to the rcda immediately which is this letter right here that i read before right that's correct okay so uh, then you can ignore my notes from before the, they have the they have the uh the application is now in in the hands of the Rock County Drainage Agency. Right. For the violation and or well, these new project will require another application. Understood. Which is what they're saying. Okay. Okay. Uh, from the uh, Town of Orange Town Bureau of Fire Prevention. What type of construction will the new buildings be? Additional access roads, hydrants, fire alarms, etc. may be required. From Douglas Sampath, Fire Inspector, Town of Orange Town.
Okay, so then there's an email from the uh, United States Army, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and uh, they have three comments. And that's, Cheryl, that's all I have. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I was just going to suggest maybe the November 15th uh, County Highway, if you want to read number one, so that I have a suggestion. Okay. <clears throat> Rock County Highway Department, November 15, 2017, number one. As the proposed improvement at the reference location expected to increase traffic flow or change the level of service on the county road system, a traffic analysis shall be required to explain days and hours of operation of the facility, traffic impact, and potential mitigation measures if needed. Uh, I was understood that they have said that they're not going to change the amount of people coming to this campsite. So. Why are we going to tell them that they have to have a traffic analysis done? That's the board's fault. Okay. I'm just asking. But we can't override highway. We'll, we'll have to work it out with highway. You'll have to hi work it out with well, highway. Well, in terms of working out, traffic is, is part of CEQA, so either you require them to do it now or yeah, as part of CEQA before you get any approval on it or well, let's hear what they have to say, and then we'll, we'll let you know. Sorry. That's all we have? That's all Question. I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, would any board members like to speak to this? Mr. Garvey. Um, are you going to explain exactly what it is that oh. you're going to do? Yeah, I can run through it for right. you. Sure. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, this this application is the Bronx House area of the camp, and it's the only portion of the camp that's on the west side of the the brook that runs through the property. The uh, improvements are, for the most part, um, replacements uh, or improvements to what's there now. Um, these two buildings here are, are pavilions. There's existing pavilions there now that are outdated. And these pavilions, which we call home bases, um, will replace those outdated pavilions in the same locations that they exist today. So they will be larger, however. They will be larger um, and nicer. <laughs> they will be. Um, the other improvements that we're proposing, uh, we show a soccer field here. There's actually an existing field in that location. It's uh, you know a, a lawn area that's um, not striped formally. I don't think there's any soccer goals there. So there's no there's no tree removal in this area that's currently open. We're going to be uh, doing some regrading things like that. Um, proposed. Um, Ball field in this location, you can see the proposed tree line here. So the existing tree line, I would say, probably runs through here. Okay, so this area is proposed to be in a wooded uh, location. Uh, you can see this dimension here. It's hard to read. I think that says 87.4. So it's um, about 90 feet of wooded buffer that will remain to the property line, and then, of course, the wooded area uh, on the neighbor's property will also remain to help buffer, you know, views, um, sounds, things like that. Uh, the last component of this site plan is a proposed pool area here. And again, that's within the 300 foot buffer area, so that'll require a variance, uh, as will these improvements as well. Uh, as far as traffic goes, as you can see, um, there's really no change in the intensity of even this area of the camp that would drive more vehicles or, you know, um, even camp campers in this area. So this, you know, as we've been stating overall, the project really is an improvement and not an expansion um, of facilities or uh, for 
you know, leading to expansion of camp, campers and traffic and those sort, sorts of things. So, um, you know, part, part of the goal of the master plan is to decentralize certain components of the camp. Right now there's a central pool area which is off this plan, uh, but it's across the brook. So um, this agency, the Bronx House, that's within this part of the camp currently has to walk a long distance to get to the central pool area. So part of this master plan, or really a, a big component, is for these pavilions to be these slightly larger uh, pavilions that the campers will, that's basically their home, that's why we call them the home bases. They'll do arts and crafts there, they'll hang out there, they'll be, you know, kind of like a, f a family um, setting for them. So a lot of their activities will be in this area. And of course, now that we have the pool over in this area, again, it's not to draw more campers, it's to allow these folks to avoid the trip to the central location of the pools right now. So in a nutshell, that's, that's the scope of, of this application. That is a little league size field? It's yes, it's, um, yes, it is. I want to say the outfield dimensions um, are is 150 feet. So Little League, I think, is actually. I th yeah, I think it is. Yep. Okay. So even the the fence, I think Little League standard is more like 200 feet. So it's yeah. it's less than Little League. Comments? Mr. Garvey, any comments? Not right now. Mr. Dell. Yes, sir. Um, the ball field, I assume since you're not operating this at night, there's no intention to put any lighting on the field? Correct. Okay. Um, is it possible that the ball field can be moved more towards the interior? Even a distance of 20 feet could make a substantial difference. Is that a possibility or is that not? Uh, we'll certainly look at it, but I think that the uh, terrain and the other obstacles that are currently there will, might make that difficult, but we'll certainly take a look at that. If you could, even that sure. 20 feet would make a substantial difference to the contiguous properties. Uh, my next question. Um, we have two problems here with drainage. First is obviously afterwards, and that after you've completed everything. Um, mm -hmm. How much disturbance, how many uh, square footage are we losing of uh, imper a pervious area by this? Do you have a, a general idea? I don't have that number in my head. Um, increasing impervious, you know, you have that the pool is considered impervious, although most pools have free board that'll catch the rain, right. um, except for extreme events. Um, Certainly the roofs for the two pavilions, the home bases are slightly larger, or they are larger than the existing pavilions, so you have a little bit there. Could well, you give me an approximate dimension of them, that's all? I think the, the pavilions, the home bases are, are I want to say 3,200 square feet. 5,600 square feet. Okay. And what we have proposed, which you can't see on this overhead, we have bioretention areas that act to treat in fact, for the pool as well. Um, the, the drainage pattern is actually, this is all high and it all slopes down to the brook. Now, I understand that. Uh, my uh, main concern is what's happening during the construction phase and when you're having a lot of site disturbance. What type of erosion controls do you have in, uh, in place for this? Proposed. Right now we have silt fence shown on the plans. Um, in some cases we have double rows of silt fence shown because of proximity to the brook uh, in more sensitive areas. Uh, st stabilized construction entrance. Um, that's pretty much what we show right now on our application. Okay. And you'll be, excuse me Mr. Dell, I'm sorry. Please, go ahead. You'll be complying with the SWPPP? Correct. We've submitted a, a detailed SWIP for this. Um, application and we'll, we'll be complying with that. Okay. How long do you, uh, should this phase 
take you according to your projections and your budget, et cetera? This is one construction season. So I, th I believe this would be slated for um, starting this fall after the camp season ends. Okay, because from what I've seen, you know, I think it's going to be, the drainage should be much better when you get done with it. But my question, again, is during the actual phase of construction. Since it's going to be one season, there may be some issues, but uh, hopefully it'll be mitigated by your erosion control systems. Okay, let's see. I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Dell. Mr. Sweeney. Sure. I just want to go back to the correspondence from the Rockland County Drainage Agency because I'm reading their email again for about the fifth time, and they say that they, um, they already responded in their, their letter of November 29th, which Mr. Garvey read, said, um, written notice that you're in violation of the Stream Control Act. And the new email doesn't say that's been rescinded. All it says is that they still haven't received a, an application. I know you said that you have, yes, yes, but have. this letter says that they haven't. No, but you got, you got that in the, the sheet letter it says I this said email that. says okay no yeah. that, that email is yeah. from um, from what day the email 26. is February 26th okay yeah. so this letter is from the 28th yeah. what letter is that okay, I don't have this that this is letter. the letter oh, that okay. I read okay, twice I don't, okay, I don't have that letter I'll I'll read 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 okay well here you go Mr. Sweeney okay all right thanks all right that was from the, the master plan oh it was a, okay it was both I got you okay I take that back then that's why I was confused it didn't make any sense to me um one question, we're talking about the impervious surface, about the roofs and the pool, um, the buildings. Is there any plan to change the roadway or pathway patterns? I haven't seen anything about that in the plans. No, no, pro no proposed changes at this point. So it's just the building structures. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Mendel, any yes. questions or comments? Thank you. Um, Starting out, the uh, soccer field that you're uh, proposing, that's a grass area now, that runs over the easement, correct? That's correct. Are they going to need any um, approvals from uh, the town, sewer? sewer? Sewer department will have to grant approval, but it's been the policy, at least when I was there, which I think has been continued, if it's not a permanent structure, if it's an open field, something like that, they will permit it. If it's a structure, they will not permit it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we should, you know, uh, we should get a comment from Mr. Peter. Yeah. We will for, for fine. Right. Okay, so put that as a condition. Comment from Mr. Peters regarding the uh, building over the easement of the soccer field. Okay. Now, um, looking here, Rockham County, I think it's there. Rock, uh, oh, and it's uh, 3.8 acres of uh, impervious area that's going to be added. That's according to Brooker. Uh, in their project description. Now, talking about that, uh, is the, um, does the plan include new sidewalks or anything to that effect? Or are they going to be dirt walkways? Uh, the only uh, sidewalk or, or patio would be adjacent to the pool area. And no that, no uh, sidewalks, you know, connecting okay. buildings or anything like that. Okay, so there's no uh, Im new uh, impervious area based upon that, so covered with the pool area. Correct. Okay. Um, also, um, the uh, Rockland County Planning, um, a Brooker Engineering uh, directs that the storage facilities, the bioretention, three systems are not adequate. Um, that will be corrected? Or yes. Do you have the figures yet on that, or is that uh, in the works? Th that'll be submitted with our next formal submission. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the uh, that tree line uh, on the map by the ball field, that's existing uh, trees that are there? This darker yeah, tree Yeah, that, that area. That's proposed. The existing tree line, um, I believe, probably runs through here. Okay, so... so this th area is the area, basically, that will be cleared of trees. Okay, but the tree line that you're showing there, that's uh, that's going to be added, or...? That, that's the proposed new tree line once these trees are in Okay. Place. Is that based upon what's existing there now, or are you going to... Uh... Correct. Okay. You're not going to add anything to those trees? Not at this point. Okay. It would be nice to see uh, a, uh, 
a landscape plan showing what trees you're cutting down and what trees are going to remain a little bit better than that uh, squiggly line that's there. Okay, that's all at this time, but uh, we have the right to ask further questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mendel. I have no further comments. We'll open it up to the public portion. Again, you'll state your name, your address, come up to the podium. You'll have three minutes. Nobody there. So. Last chance, no one else. I make a motion to close the public portion. Mr. Sweeney seconds. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I have one question for the applicant. Sir, can you address the traffic? I mean, why do you think there will be less traffic or no traffic? I should say less. Be the same. Oh, okay. How come? Uh, we're handling the same population. We're not increasing the use. So it's going to be the same, which has been for the last many years. I think, what I think, I think. On the basis of what? How many campers are there today? What do you mean? It's campers from what? Memorial Day to Labor Day? The camp is open six weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, you want to? Okay, so. He's the operator. You want to? You're going to have to invite him up. He's going to have to state his name and just for Would the you record. come up and state your name, sir, and your affiliation with the project? Sign in, please. Yep. What do I sign? Uh, Kevin Curran, C-U-R-R-I-N. I, did I say I-N? I don't know how to spell my name. A-N? <laughs> so I'm uh, Kevin Curran. You might want to sit. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, I'm Kevin Curran, Director of Real Estate for UJ Federation, the owner of the property. Um, and uh, as the owner, we are prepared to invest, um, I think we have a budget of $13 million to invest in this project. Um, those funds are in place. It's basically floated a bond to do it, and uh, we expect to roll out this once we get approvals roll out a significant, I mean, basically, if, if our cost estimating is correct, everything that we see on this plan. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Does mm -hmm. that mean the $13 million is going to be for this particular application or the No, for the camp? entire site plan. Okay, I'm just, sorry. I just yeah, want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. For the various so, phases? So, so to speak. Yeah, the, 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 the various grand areas site, that they're the, going to be. The various site areas on the site that we saw during the, the presentation of the master plan, yeah. So with respect to capacity and number of campers, it's a hard number to really pin down because over the years there have been you know, many agencies on this property and we've made a concerted effort to establish a sensible capacity for the site based on you know, um, the buildings that we're proposing to, put, put, um, to build in the plan. So for the Bronx House site, you see two of these home bases. They are not larger in the, spe in the sense of capacity, though they are larger buildings, they actually provide other features that were per, um, for changing, uh, for swimming changing. There's a changing stations in these home bases because we don't have, uh, we have a Grand Central complex now that has a changing area and we're proposing creating changing in these, these new home bases. So we're, we, we, we we have built these for a capacity of about 450 campers. Um, the way camp operates is it's always a struggle every summer to get 450 kids there every day of the year because parents want to send their kids at the front of the summer and go on vacation the second half of the summer. But we're building a capacity of 450 so that we can serve and hopefully grow the camp in that respect by keeping, by reaching capacity each and every day. But that's the capacity for this section of camp, and it's consistent with what's been over the years. Again, it's historical. There are, there are agencies that no longer camp there that have been shifted off so that we could actually provide sensible camping environment for, for the, the kids that are on camp now. So, Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? 
Absolutely, Mr. Garvey. So, okay, so when you say historically, what are you, what are you uh, basing that on? Are you saying for like the last 10 years, historically we've had about 450 campers? What I'm saying is this camp, previously there were two camps on the western side of the brook. Okay, so let's go back again, mm -hmm. okay, so that there's, everybody's here can be clear. Okay. You're saying this camp. Now, are you saying the camp that's up there on, this, on the board, or are you saying the yes. entire? Okay, yes. that's just all I need to know. But previously there was another ca camping agency on the western side of the On brook. that same site that, you're, that we have uh, before Not us. on the exact same site, but western of the brook. Okay, right? understood. And so we realized that that was not in the best interest of this property to, you know, to overextend campers. So we've, we've got one remaining camp on the western side of the brook. It is the Bronx House camp, and their capacity is, peak capacity is 450. Okay. That's what we're building for. All right, that's great. Thank you for that clarification. And that's a July-August time frame? Yeah, camp starts at the tail end of June and is done by August, basically. <laughs> I mean, uh, the middle of August. Mr. Ma Mendel? Right, just going back to the, uh, the ball field there. Uh, is there any, you, you know, you see the back of the ball field and you see the tree line. Is there a specific distance there that you have? Uh, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more uh, specificity regarding the distances, the size of the field, the distance from the back of the field up to uh, the tree line. You know, how many feet is that? Is that 5, 10, 15 feet? I'm oh, sorry. But what, what tree, what, because it's already been clarified that the drawing it's, that you're seeing up there, you can't see. It's 80, know, but I on Jane's thing, she said it was almost 90 feet. feet. Okay, oh, much better, okay. <laughs> well, how'd you but do I that? still don't have distances on there, Mr. Coffey. I'm just asking. I mean, yeah. I, you know. But that entire wooded section will be carved out, correct? That, that's the tree clearing limit line. Right. Um, was there going to be a fence there in the back of the field? No, at this point, we want to leave it open or? Probably fence uh, for, the, for the backstop and extending up the first and third base lines just past uh, the bases. But nothing into the outfield, in other words. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you at this time. You're welcome. Well, they're going to have to come back to us for um, final, right? Absolutely. For this? Uh, I'm not the chair anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> my opinion, in my opinion, is that they work it out with highway and that they have to have some sort of conclusion before they come back with final. And we can, uh, I, we, sh I, one, Stating for one member of the board, I would say that I'm okay with giving them uh, preliminary tonight. Okay. I think that I, I, I think that they have demonstrated uh, a willingness to work with the buildings department. Is that fair to say, uh, Jane? I don't want to speak for you. Yes, we've worked with a lot of issues. I do have a question, though, if I, I may interject real quick. Certainly. 450 campers is only for this one section of campus. Correct. I, and that's a peak. The traffic or for the entire help us the entire camp. Yeah. And we have received many complaints about the buses stacking and sitting there idle. So I would like to know, and I think that's what Highway is saying, is at maximum capacity when all the camps are in session, what is going to be the occupant one there? How many campers? And if you're adding structures and you're adding if you're making some of the pavilions larger. It just generates the thought that you're going to add more campers. So I think that's what is generating the questions about the traffic and how it's going to impact. So that really, I think, goes back to the master plan, the overall plan, as to how they're going to deal with that and what the maximum capacity will be. And that's still an outstanding question that hasn't been answered. Could I give a little input? The traffic from the other areas comes through Sickletown Road, does not come through this area. This area is fed by Weld Street, if I'm not mistaken. The traffic from the other areas come from Sickletown Road. Donald, I understand that, okay. but it's a mass, your Again, plan, you but, have to have an overall 
again, again, the volume that's going to go through Sickletown Road is the same volume that we have now. In other that, words, uh, these, this is an improvement program. It's not an expansion program. But you're expanding the home bases, which could lead to exceeding your peak. No. Camp. We're building the camp to the capacity that is uh, occupying now. I mean, the, 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 the challenge is, obviously, there are average days and there are peak days. We're building a, a capacity to meet the peak demand on the property. So that, it's not an exact science, but the intention is really, it is a replacement plan. While we, we feel, and if anybody on the board were to visit the camps, you'd say, these are really more than tired facilities. They're sorely inadequate. They are undersized. They, they can't serve any real purpose. We want these buildings to be purposeful program spaces for children that will perfect, protect them from sun when it's just bearing down sun, to give them program space with, that is sheltered and, you know, in, in the event of rain events. So um, we're, we've been really thoughtful about this. If not, we're not doubling the size of this camp. We're not raising it by 30%. We're basically building to what our campers, the peak capacity has been over you know, the long history of, you know, we've been on the property for 60 plus years. So there are, there are, it's, it's, it's a, a process whereby we recognize that there were too many children on our camp. We've asked, to, we've, facilitated two agencies to leave the campground so that we could actually live within a capacity that was meaningful for all four camping agencies that remain. Yes, Mr. Dell. Yeah, can you give us even an approximation of the total amount of campers on a given day that this facility is going to serve? And I think that what Mr. Dell is saying by this facility, and please correct me, is the, the entire, entire facility. Right. That is correct, sir. Thank you very so much, Mr. Barber. bear with me on the addition, but um, uh, something like 2,500 campers on the entire campground, on the 105 on, acres. I, on any, on, that would be the maximum you'd have on any day during your campground. That would be a, it, the days that we would hit peak, yes, yes. I mean, and our, the averages tend to be less than that because, again, children... Uh, their families say, we want to go on vacation in August, so no, you're not going to okay. camp in August. So then you're representing that 10 years ago you had approximately 2,500 campers I, there every day? Th there's a chance that it could have been greatly in excess of that. There was one camp from Moshalu uh, that was probably four or 500 kids that left the camp. We, it, recently we had a camp that was had aspirations to grow that we felt just could not be accommodated uh, from the JCC of Manhattan and we facilitated them purchasing a camp within 20 minutes of the site so that they could take their camping off grounds. All right, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I, a I traffic study in yeah. the middle of July wouldn't be out of reason to ask for then? I, I will defer to the board, really. I mean, we, we want to be cooperative and good neighbors about this. I, I think, again, I think that we should say, again, yeah. I'm just... Mr. Garvey, this. I just think that we should let them go and come back, and if they come back, they should have an answer for us. I don't think it should stop them from getting preliminary tonight. That's, yeah, that's fair. Agreed. My comment is just that you know, look at Rockland County Highway, and they have four conditions, and I'm sorry, eight conditions, and they talk about this. Yes. I don't see any reason to override those. Mm. But We're not going to override. No, them. Saying, no, no, I agree. No, no, I can't no. be finished. So I'm saying they have to be met by four final anyway. Yes. Sir. So I think we can stand with those suggestions, and if they don't, mm. they have to be met. Well, they won't get final. That's yeah. fine. I got ahead of myself on that. That's yeah, fine. You, we can, well, the, you know, if they can get an agreement with Highway and they can put it on paper and bring it back, if they can't get an agreement with Highway, then they're going to have to supply a traffic study right. before final, one uh, or the other. I'm amenable to that. Any? That's what I said. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Slavin, Mr. Magrino, any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I make a motion for lead agency. Second. All in favor? Well, Aye. Uh, Aye. Mr. McGrino, yes? I'm sorry, I was going to say, we will be reaffirming this previously issued negative declaration on the uh, so I would, plan. I would. So that will be the motion. I, I was going to say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I make a motion to reaffirm neg deck from the uh, 
from the preliminary that was given for the master plan. Second. Mr. Mendel seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I make preliminary with conditions. With conditions. I make the motion for preliminary with conditions uh, to make sure that we put uh, the one condition that we want to put in before I forget is Mr. Mandel's about them not building any kind of structure over the easement. <coughs> sewer. The sewer easement. And you're going to look at moving the ball field possibly as well? Possibly, Mr. but, uh, but had recommended. they will do their best to move the ball field. I, I just ask them to restudy it. That's all right. And also, I think that in that, it doesn't just, it, any, any movement would be beneficial. That's in the fair. correct direction. In the correct direction. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so uh, uh, Jane Slavin's uh, letter, five, co five comments, Bruce Peters. 15, Brooker Engineering is 11, Rockland County Planning's 14, Rockland County Health 2, Rockland County Highway 8. Uh, the, I'm going to put in here because uh, of the uh, drainage agency's letter from February 28th that the application has been made. Uh, Rockland County Bureau, excuse me, Town of Orangetown Bureau of Fire 1. And also the Army Corps of Engineers email, which has three comments on it. And I believe that's all I have, Cheryl. Oh, I, no, let me go back. All right. That's it. That's it, Mr. Chair. That's all I have. Uh, I need a second. Second. Mr. Mandel seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have the Cunningham House Site Plan Amendment, PB 18-07. For preliminary uh, review. They're probably here for the end right here, are we? Oh, they're there or left, yeah. 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 They won't be here. under uh, work Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, I think you uh, gentlemen are familiar with our okay, application. First of all, please introduce yourselves and state your name and your uh, affiliation with the project. Sure. Greg Verrilli, Rogers, Habis, Verrilli, and Eisen for the applicant, the Cunningham House. Steve Jansen, the owner of the building. Uh, yes, we are familiar with the project. Yes. So uh, we were here last spring. Um, we received approval on our uh, submission subject to certain um, Revisions as per Brooker Engineering, uh, we were working with them in order to get uh, the site plan in order. Um, weren't able to do it before the uh, uh, the winter came, so we could start the construction on it. Um, so in the meantime, the uh, you know the applicant had decided that he wanted to pave the parking area. That is the only change that we have made uh, to this application. It's essentially identical to the prior one, except it's paved instead of uh, gravel. Um, we have also done some additional, um, you know, revisions to the plan based on requests, um, you know, as, as per the, uh, the drainage, um, certain things, um, a check valve, ish, uh, 
detail on the uh, second sheet. And um, other than that, we are probably in the same situation as we were last time. Cunningham House should be indicated on all plans. Bruce Peters, one A and B. Brooker, the applications provide sufficient information to demonstrate the petition, that potential significant adverse impacts with respect to drainage will be mitigated. We therefore recommend that the Cunningham House site plan be approved for drainage subject to the project, above project comments, and there are two, which I'm sure is fine with you guys. Correct. And ladies. Rockland County Planning has six. However, uh, what are we doing, Mr. Magrino? What did we say the last time? Or is anybody can help me about this landscape yeah. plan? Did we say? Yeah. Okay, why are we still, okay, so do we have to override them again? Rockin County yeah, planning. Yeah, yeah, so, so three and four are we're, we're overriding, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you want over again. That's what we're okay. So uh, Rockin County planning has. What are you talking about? I'm reading the plans. I'm reading the comments. No, no, I'm sorry, not there yet to override. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not the chair. But I'm not bitter. No, I'm only kidding. I'm not bitter. Okay, so there's six. Rockland County Health. One. Rockland County Sewer. None. There's an email, but it's not really a car. It's just a correspondence. It's not a. It's not part of the record. Uh, I mean, sorry, but what do I do? I mean, I don't. I can reference the email. That's what I'm trying to do. Right, February 20, but it's not a condition. Which, that's what I meant to say. From Mr. Norton. From Mr. Norton, February 27. Cheryl, that's all I have. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Any comments from the board? Uh, no, except uh, I'd like to get to overriding the Rockland County planning uh, comments <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> Mr. Dell, any comments? Uh, only oh, I'm com sorry, Mr. Dell. You, Wait, guys, you guys have been really, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a long haul, okay? So don't come back, okay? Let's We're get trying. this done. We, we really don't okay? not to. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and then that way we can waste our time again overriding the Rockland County planning department. <laughs> I hear you. Okay? Again. Sorry, Mr. Dell, go ahead. That's going to right, sir. Okay, uh, my only comment is I would have preferred it to stay gravel, but this is what's been elected to do. And it looks like we looked at this thing so many times, and I concur with what our former chairman said just now that uh, we hopefully we can move on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sweeney. Uh, same thing, just thank you for working so hard with the drainage agency to get that all worked out. Mr. Mendel. Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, what's the reason you change here from the gravel back to the uh, the paved um, parking lot? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, it it just seemed to me that we needed the variance for gravel, apparently. And you got it, yeah. And and so now uh, the more I thought about it, and time took time to get you know the the drainage stuff all done, and and then I just realized that you know getting this thing cleared in the winter. It's, it's a mess. You should see the place now. I mean, the, the snowplow comes in and, and, you know, the gravel gets picked up and moved into the gardens and there's mud everywhere. So I said, let's just spend the extra money and do this professionally and get it done the right way. Okay. You know, so that's and it. one other question. The, uh, going back to the, uh, I guess it's the email from uh, Norton from, I guess, the 76th house mm -hmm. regarding uh, flooding. Uh, what's the status with that? Is this, uh, is this new parking? Yeah, and uh, it's just, uh, uh, you know, if he had just knocked on the door and asked me about it, I would have showed him the plans. This is going to solve 
any, uh, probably solve, totally mitigate any weeping or moisture problems that he seems to think he has. Because we're actually, the ponding that occurs now, and, and it has historically occurred, right. it's just been a mud pit back there. So we still get ponding because the drainage, the drywall we have in the parking lot is, is not enough to contain it. So now we have two additional, much larger drywalls connected and that, that's going to solve the ponding problem. So you know, it's not going to be an issue. He'd be, he should be, you know, very thankful about what we're doing here if he just took the time to, to study it a little bit, I think. So, you know, that's it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, just one. Yes, Mr. Dell. Thank you, sir. Just one quick comment. I'm not even suggesting that you do this, but if there was a desire on your part to make that look more historic, there are relatively simple technologies whereby you could imprint a pattern into the blacktop or perhaps integrally color similar to the uh, walkways that you see right outside your windows. Yeah, right. So that's something you may want to consider. It would certainly make it look a little more historic yeah, I didn't than know you what you're that. proposing. Happy to, happy to consider that, yeah. Thank you If very you have much. Any, any information you can send us, I mean, or we'll, okay, we'll, I think we'll look into it. Yeah. Uh, the building department, the highway yeah. department would certainly have information on it. Right. What? Building department would not have No, highway. Highway Department should have okay, that. We'll I'm sure that. they'd be glad to yeah. cooperate with Thank you. you. Thank you. And lastly, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Jansen, uh, the, the property, the gravel driveway, to get into your, that's still going to remain gravel to the yeah, west? So the property to, uh, yeah. sorry, the property um, to the uh, west is a, is a large parking area. It's just gravel. We're actually, you know, millings, I think he calls every now and then. He gets more millings and dumps them and spreads them out with his tractor. And, uh, that's going to stay that way. And that's our easement. That's our right of way to get into our lot. So, And that won't a, have an effect on your proposed pavement plan? Uh, no, no, it's, it, it's not. It'll be, yeah, it'll be this, probably come in at the same, more or less the same. I don't know what the, you know, the elevations are, but more or less the same uh, grading. You know? okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Open up to the public portion. Uh, if anyone would like to come up to the... Speaker, state your name, your address. My name is Mary Cornelius. I'm the Orangetown historian. I live in Tapan, New York. I'd like to read a short statement. In deference to the historic significance of the 76 house, the current owner invested almost a half a million dollars to restore the sandstone house when he purchased the building in 1985. I'm the sorry, house, Mrs. Cardenas. Uh, Are you talking about the 76 house or this, or uh, yeah, this applicant? Uh, uh, well, it's in relationship to this Okay, but I'm, I'm asking, project. the question I'm asking, I'm sorry to interrupt you, is are you talking about the 76 house invents, invested the money or the owner of the property, the applicant? I'm sorry. The, the owner of the 76 okay, house. Okay, thank you. That's All right, sorry. The house is almost 264 years old and is one of the key components in the historic area in Tepan and is listed on the National Register. Since the house is constructed of sandstone, the, so the stone itself is soft and permeable. And given enough time, water coursing around the stone will weaken the stone and bonding causing leakage. And until the adjacent parking lot was improved, the basement had not had any water in it. I am asking this board for its assistance in preserving and protecting part of Orange Town's rich history by securing a plan to divert the water, uh, the water that's been ponding from the adjacent property. I'm also asking whether an environmental statement was submitted before the parking lot was impro improvement was made and whether there was a place in the permit that included the type of material that was used for the surface of the parking lot before the work was done. Thank you for your assistance in saving a piece of Orange Town history. Mr. Chairman, can yes. I ask Ms. Ms. Yes, Cardenas, Mr. Dell. Just a quick question. Yep. Are you speaking as a private citizen or on in your official capacity? My official capacity. Okay, thank you. By the way, I did see the flooding in the basement. Okay. Anybody else? Would anybody else like to speak? I'm Carol Laval, president of the Tappan Town Historical Society, and I also am in, I live in Tappan, I'm sorry, Carol Laval, 
president of the Tappan Town Historical Society. Um, I live in Tappan also. Um, and I'm here to uh, support Mary Cardenas' statement and also um, to support Rob Norton's request that uh, more deliberation go into considering the drainage that is affecting uh, the 76 house. Uh, I too have seen the water in the basement over the past week. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I have to say that uh, given the, the uh, streams that do run down the hillside into, through Tapan and into the creek, it is questionable uh, that in fact um, the uh, macadam uh, will be an improvement over uh, a semi-permeable parking lot or that it would in fact help with the drainage uh, problem at the moment. Um, I'm also, I have a question about the parking variance, um, seven spaces. There, that's employees of Janssen Media. Um, now the boutique, which was a lovely boutique, unfortunately there was no parking on Main Street for it. Uh, would that then reopen as a result and therefore require more parking spaces? And I believe there is an apartment, a grandfathered apartment, um, for which there probably is a parking uh, needed as well, which suggests to me that maybe seven spaces is um, a bit of a problem. Also, um, I have to say that it really isn't a mud pit back there when there was simply the gardens of the, when the LaCroix house was there. It was, uh, there was no mud pit whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> it was only until they were taken up and the present parking lot was put in that there has been that kind of flooding there. Um, both houses, both structures are of great value to the historic area and it is a shame to see that one is pitted against the other uh, because we support both efforts in preservation uh, and would like to see a little bit more care put into the way in which approval is given for the design of the parking lot as it affects the drainage of its surrounding neighbors, particularly the 76 house, which is one of the oldest houses in, in, the, in Tepan. So thank you for the, your consideration. Any questions? Sorry. Would anyone else like to speak? We'll close the public portion. I make a motion to close the public portion. Mr. Garvey. Mr. Sweeney seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Borelli, would you like to address any of these questions? Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have personal knowledge as to what occurred prior, but from what Klein has told me, that there was an issue with the ponding in the backyard previously. Um, maybe he can speak to that in a second. Um, Again, the, the drainage that is being put in is, is seeking to address this. Um, it should alleviate any issues. Um, if we left it as is, uh, there would still be runoff, you know. Um, I, Are the dry wells in yet? Or no, oh. they're, they're, proposed they're proposed to be oh, yes. two new large dry wells to be, to be installed, uh, in addition to the existing one that's already in place, that which will remain in place as per the board's um, suggestion last time. So, Mr. Yeah, yeah, my only comment is that uh, Brooker Engineering has spent a lot of time, I think, working with my engineer on the drainage issues, and I assume that they, they know what they're doing. I mean, a 100-year rain event is taken care of, so I, I assume it's, it's going to work. You know, that's it. Um, that is in, uh, but I, uh, probably a large portion of it is going to be removed during this project and then replaced because the part that between the lawn the side lawn on the southern side and and the, that's going to be where the dry wells connect so they have to put in you know connecting pipes and things like that so yeah yeah It exists and it will be removed, picked up, and then put back in. So it'll still be there, I assume. Although there'll also be a, uh, something to account for the handicapped space. So it won't be a, uh, like this. It'll be you know, some sort of a ramp up 
they'll, they'll use the Belgian block and this from something like that. Yeah. It's all proposed, yeah. Yeah. It's just the, yeah. Just the small. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, final. This, this is for final, Cheryl. Post this final. Uh, Mrs. Slavin, Mr. Magrino, any objection going to final? We go forward. We need to amend. Yes, we need to override two items. Well, and in terms of secret, confirm the uh, or some reaffirm the previously issued negative declaration of the original plan. And I think we should go over one and override. Yes, if you don't mind, Mr. Magrino. I am only one yes, member of the we board. We need to. Uh, I'm sorry. Reaffirm uh, secret or? Yeah. yeah. I make a motion to reaffirm uh, the previous negative deck. Second. Mr. Mandel seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I need, I would uh, propose a recommendation to move ahead with final, with conditions. That's my motion. Motion. Uh, conditions are? That the Cunningham House shall be indicated on all plans. Sorry, I just love that one. Uh, that's from Jane Slavin. Yeah. It's already done? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, from uh, Bruce Peters, one, A and B. Brooker, two. Rockland County Department of Planning, one, two, five, and six. Uh, I would like to make a motion that we override number three because uh, it's the 25th time that we're asking to override number three since the, the applicant has been here. Okay, sorry, uh, you're right. I, I make a motion that we override number three because of previous applications we've overrided number three because we are not asking the applicant to provide a landscaping plan at this time. That is much better. Why don't you say due to site, uh, site constrictions? Okay, whatever Mr. Dell says. Uh, plan uh, is not required for this site. Plus, yes. Uh, the uh, existing landscaping on the site was sufficient. Right. Uh, okay. Great. Then I'll, I'll reamend my proposed override uh, that we override number three because the previous landscaping was sufficient according to the board of the town of Orange Town Planning right. Board. Is that okay, Mr. Magrino? Right. So we need a second. Second. Who's oh, second. Mr. Sweeney seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I also will make a motion. A motion to override number three. I mean, excuse me, number four. Uh, okay. And not to be a cavalier, rationale. but because we've also felt that the lights of the site lighting was sufficient, right. and that there wasn't enough work being done to ask them to provide a sighting, light sighting plan. Yeah, and the uh, <coughs> ambient light is sufficient to uh, illuminate the site. And the applicant's proposing no additional lighting. Correct. Okay. Second. Second. Mr. Mandel seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, Rock and County Department of Health, one. Rock, nope. And then uh, there's correspondence from Mr. Norton. That's all I have, Cheryl. Uh, second on the final. Second. Mr. Mandel seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. What time you got here? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Next project up is the Spark Hill. Uh, Palisades Fire District Site Plan, PB 1808, for final site, site plan review. Is this drinkable? I don't know how old it is, it's been but. been a while. No, it's been from last night. Oh. Okay. Are Just we good? The door is open. Okay, can you excuse me for a minute, Mr. Chairman? Uh, 
uh, we're going to take a quick break here, just a couple minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. With the surveyors and engineers for the project. I have Jeff Sendlewski, the architect for the project. I believe the board is familiar with this project. Uh, we got preliminary approval, I believe, last fall. We went to the zoning board to got a, get our variance, went to ACA board to get architectural approval, which we did, and we're back tonight for final. We do have two issues, though. Uh, we're going to request that you override county number four because that concerns flagging of wetlands and any any work within the wetlands. We think that's an unfair comment. Why should we have the fire department have wetlands flagged when we're not going beyond the existing parking lot with any improvements? Mm -hmm. And the other issue was Bruce Peters requested that prior to final we have a test hall and a perk test done, per, perk test dug and done. Um, due to the time of year, we haven't had that opportunity to do that. We plan on doing that in the next couple of weeks or within the next month. And if anything changes regarding the drainage design that we do have, we'd be happy to come back to the board if, you know, if it requires redesigning any drainage. Other than that, uh, we have no issue with any other comments. Thank you, Mr. Atzel. Uh, Mr. Garvey, can you read the comments, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The PRC has no additional comments beyond the comments submitted by other agencies. Uh, from Jane Slavin. Elevation certificate is required per section four of the floodplain development permit application before the application can be processed. Okay, so uh, the applicant still needs to comply with PB decision number 17 41, mm -hmm. condition number eight, perk test 13, use, uh, the post construction stormwater maintenance plan provided is under review. From Brooker, they have uh, recommend that the Spark Hill Fire District site plan and application be approved for drainage subject <coughs> to the above project comments, which are four. Rockland County Department of Planning has seven. Rockland County Health has one. Mm -hmm. Rockland County Highway None. has a de minimis impact, so that's not a condition. Rockland County, um, excuse me, Town of Orangetown Fire. I hope they don't have any comments. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> that would be so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess, yeah, but I mean, come on. You guys can't work it out before they write something down? <laughs> okay, the, fire, the Orangetown Fire Prevention doesn't have any comments. <clears throat> and Cheryl, that's all I have. Bruce uh, Peters? No, no, we don't override oh, Bruce, but I'm County say planning about number four. Uh, number four from county. Wetlands. And what else? Which other one from county? county Just, Just number four. four. Okay, so can we, are we up for comments from the board now, Mr. Uh, Yes, sure. Mr. Garvey, uh, would you like to start us off, sir? If you don't mind. The, the only question I have is you're saying that you have a problem with Bruce Peters' perk test. Why, why didn't you do the perk test before? I mean, this is from the – we you guys were, you guys came to us a long, long time ago. Why didn't you just do the perk test between now and then? Well, actually, since the first time – I believe we were here back in October, September, October, and we had – Of what? Of last year. Of 17? 17. Who's got the record? I know I'm old, but I don't remember October, that's for sure. Uh, July 26, 2017. Okay. Oh, really? So, that okay. okay. So uh, let's get back to my well, question. Okay. okay. From July until now, we are the first week in March. Why are we what, fighting over a perk test that could have been well, performed any time? We're, we're not fighting over it. We don't, we're not going to say but we're not going to do it. the thing is, you see, it. Mr. Atzel, the problem is, is that um, you're putting us in a very, uh, you know, uh, we, we shouldn't, you should have done the perk test. That's really but what the if, problem is. Because we had a plenty of time. Bruce knows, you have know Bruce, and you know that you should have done the perk test. And now you're asking us to, like, say, oh, well, we'll, we'll get the perk test done. But, but 
you know, and we don't, we're not here to, uh, you, you're supposed to make our jobs easy. You know, I that's, a, that's the I problem. Understand. If I could just explain. Go ahead. Upon the preliminary approval, we had to relocate the drainage system where it was located before it was located in the back near the parking lot. We've moved that out of the 100 year floodplain and had to put it in front of the building, actually on the Route 340 side. And that was based on Ken DiGennaro's comments and County Drainage Agency Which comments. you got back in July. We, yes, but we didn't, have, we didn't know exactly where we were locating okay. the drainage design. There's we knew we had to members, move it, There's only we five members of this board here, Mr. Okay, just keep that in mind. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. All right, you we guys are supposed to, to make this stuff as easy. We, we're, we're supposed to, you know, if there's, if there's problems, we're supposed to be here to try to alleviate the problems, but you shouldn't be bringing problems to us so that we can, you know, that's the problem. And I apologize. We knew we had to relocate the drainage. We hadn't established where we were re relocating it at that time. Okay, and the next thing is, is that what's the problem <coughs> with the delineated the, the uh, wetlands <coughs> on the site plan? I mean, what different, that's what... Right? Isn't that what Because we have to hire, we would have to hire a wetlands expert to go out and flag them, send our field okay. crew out there to locate them at the expense of the fire district okay. when uh, we're not going anywhere near any I wetlands maybe or the, land the stream. Surveyor could just go out there and put no. them in there. No. You have to delineate them. Okay, fine. That's okay. That's all I have, Mr. Uh, Young. Thank, thank you, Mr. Garvin. Mr. Dell. Yes. Um, so, pursuant to what Mr. Garvey said, you are willing to do the perk test? Yes, most definitely so. Okay, and we can make it, uh, assuming we move ahead with this, which I wouldn't be opposed to, that would be part of the final, that they, uh, the final the conditions, conditions right. would be subject to an approved, uh, an acceptable before perk they test. Before file the plan. Before they uh, file the plan. Final plan, yeah. Final plan. Yes, we have no objection to that. All right, because I, I know the area you're talking about. I don't think you're gonna have any problem, because a lot of that's just sand, so it mm -hmm. should go down a few feet. All right, Mr. Slavin. Mike? Oh, yes. All right. Anyway, uh, that's all my questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sweeney. No additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Yeah, Mr. Mandel. Yeah, just a couple of quick questions. What uh, pre-treatment uh, system are you going to actually use for the water oil separator? Mm -hmm. Which one? I believe it's a different system now. It's probably called the first defense. The details are provided on the plans, and Mr. DeGennaro has reviewed them and found them to be acceptable. Okay. You don't say it in the uh, thing. You say first or something else. It's well, that's, that's a typical, yes. It's called first defense, and it has the model number or approved equal in case that model is not available. But that's the, no that's the model we've specified on the plans. Okay. All right, and I, and I agree with Mr. Garvey. I don't know why you haven't done the perk test yet. You know, I know you move stuff around, but uh, usually we don't approve things unless there's a perk test done. Oh, that should have been, uh, yeah. well. That's what I was trying to avoid, Mr. Atzel. Point taken. Thank you. Point taken. Very important part of training. Mr. Mandel. Would you be comfortable with moving it on to saying they could not uh, get their final before the successful no, it's not final. You didn't get the final. It's not, he's going to vote no. no. It's here for final. It's here for final. It's here for final. It's here for final. Okay, the, the map's not. And we do realize that we would have to do the perk test before the plans would be filed within the town anyway. Okay. If one person so doesn't go. Are we talking over, override well, of Bruce override. Peters? It's not it, they oh, would, it's a big condition. No. I, I don't have a problem with the uh, override of the um, county? county planning, but uh, definitely I, I won't approve uh, unless, you know, unless the park test is done. But no, he, I we can't, I mean, we're all should, in agreement with that. Can you yes. post, you're, you're not going to vote for it if they don't have the perk test, or are you going to say, okay, but they can't file, they can't file. You can't file, file. Okay, file. okay, okay. Yeah. so then you should, you should poll the board, if you don't mind, and ask them, if, mm -hmm. if, because we need four of us to vote for, uh, to approve, and it, it seems, and I don't want to speak for him until he, he says so, but it seems that Mr. Mandel is not going to approve this without the perk test. But I think you have the four of us who said that they are, so I think you should just do that. I, I think it should be as a, a condition of final. Well, I know that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah I have no problem with that. As a condition. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, 
I think that. So just ask. Hold the board. I'm, I'm, I'm for moving it forward with giving them final and as a condition that they have to perform the perk test before all of the. Mr. Dell? Everything's, everything's finalized. Yeah. It's to signed the satisfaction over. of the building department and the deeming. Yes. Yes. Yeah, as usual, I concur with Mr. Garvin. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sweeney. <laughs> Mr. Mandel. No. I will. It'll be a four to one vote. Okay. You guys say what I'm telling you? Okay, uh, I think I read everything, right? So now, uh, do I make a motion for final with the. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry? Public, I'm sorry, public portion. portion. Sorry, moving ahead. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak about this project? Please come up, state your name and your address, please. I make a motion. I second. Aye. Uh, I make a motion for final with uh, conditions. Conditions are? Uh, Jane Slavin's one. Mm -hmm. Bruce Peters, two. Uh, with, I mean, I guess we could say now that the condition for Bruce Peters number two is that the perk test be performed prior to all final documents being signed off by the county DEME and Bruce Peters. Now that's the perk test being passed. I'm oh, sorry. Right? The perk test being passed. Yes, right. Okay, sorry. Yes, that the perk test passes to the satisfaction of Mr. Uh, Peters and the DEME. Is that okay? That's comment number one. Brooker Engineering has four. I'm just gonna, I, just want to say, I know you want an override on number four from the county. That, they may challenge on that. I mean, if you're building in the wetlands, don't We're not built, we're not, we're not, not that's I, the point. I understand, but it's not shown. Where, where are the wetlands? There's certainly not in a paved parking lot that we're not going beyond. We're not going beyond the back of the paved parking lot with any development. Can I make a suggestion? that the wetlands in there are going to be at a specific contour. And if you were to find out from contiguous properties at what contour they're noted at and show that you're not, they're not in there, that would justify it. They're not shown on they're not shown on the contiguous properties. We have a residence to the on the south on the on the left side as you're facing and then well, the restaurant on the other. have maps where they show at what contours they are in that area. There's the, the very generalized good. maps. That's why they come up with these comments. And there's a Spark Hill Creek towards on the back property, the back of the property. I, I'm familiar with the site. I'm you know not too far from here. Mm -hmm. So, but I think knowing the site, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But I think there's some dimension that they put the wetlands at it. At uh, I'm sorry, the the, other, the level that we're talking about here is delineated at a certain contour. Mm, no, wetlands is determined by. Different types of plants, different types of soils. No, I understand that, but I mean, the er knowing the area, uh, it, it would probably that most of it's impacted directly by the stream itself. I'm talking more about the floodplain rather than the wetlands. Yeah, well, let's not, so let's not, let's not. Uh, okay, well, let's let's not go there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's just move on. Thank you. We could still override it, but they would challenge it. The county would make it. The county would make it. Okay, so the, the county I mean, might not get permits. But that would be up to them, not you know, like. We're, well, the, we re we require a Rockland Town Rockland County Drainage Agency permit, and they've they've not mentioned wetlands or anything like that, in their comments that we've responded to and sent back well, to them. The, the reason you're saying you are not showing it on the site plan is because you're not um, expanding. What your the project is not expanding anything. We're not expanding beyond the far edge of the there. parking lot. From exactly, already it's already been developed. The area that we're de we're redeveloping has already been developed. Well, look, it's up to the board if you want to override it. If you override it and the county doesn't give them permits, then they no, can't give them. Then they can't build. Then we can't give them the permits. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm willing to take that. Well, can we ask the applicant if they're willing to take that chance? 
Yes. Rather than come back with Well, they'd have to come back either way. So they'd have okay. to come back and say no, they just got offering an option. Either way, they're coming back. <laughs> no, I'm just offering them an option. Okay. Okay, so I need, I'll make a recommendation that we override number four, the Rock County Department of Planning. I mean, a uh, motion, sorry. That they're not going beyond the paved parking lot or going, uh, and uh, there's no, what do we say, Rob? You, you're better at this than me. <laughs> uh, I guess what they're saying is the area that is already disturbed, the proposed project is not going beyond the area that's already Disturbed. Developed. Yeah, that's and it. developed with, you know, with parking here. Need a second. I'll make a second on that one. Damn. Mr. Bond seconds. On favor. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Wonders never cease. Fish <laughs> <laughs> your buddy. <laughs> okay. Mr. Dell seconds. <laughs> Favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so uh, then they have uh, Rocky County Health 1. And that's it, Cheryl. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. You need a second? Second. Mr. Sweeney seconds. seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? No, no, no. It's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Do the perk test, Mr. Rassel. <laughs> Next up, SCAE, oh, hold on, hold on. site plan. Final site plan and special permit review. PB 18-09. This is SCAE? SCAE, yes. Here representing Mr. Skays. Yes, I am. Mr. Brenner. By the way, you can't override Bruce Peters. I know, we know that. I didn't say we were gonna. And good luck to him, because if you don't do what Bruce wants, he's never gonna get a permit. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, we are here for the antenna. And this has been a long the trip. Antenna. It's been a long trip, and uh, we've gotten approval from the town board, we've got approval from the planning board, we've got approval from the architecture review board, and the zoning board, so. Okay. That's it. Right. Mr. Gorby, would you? Thank you. PRC has no additional comments. Jane Slavin, two. Bruce Peters has nothing additional. Uh, highway, two. Rock and County Health has nothing. That's all I have, Cheryl. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. Any comments, Mr. Garvey? Not at this time, Mr. Chair. Mr. Dell. I made my comments previously. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sweeney, any comments? No new comments since last time. And Mr. Mendel. I've made, I've made all my comments the previous uh, things, and they've complied with most. I'm in agreement with the rest of the board. I have no additional comments. Uh, we'll go to the public. Uh, if anybody would like to speak, please come up to the microphone, state your name, your address, and make a motion to close the public portion. Second. Mr. Mandel seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, Mr. Dell. Uh, I'd like to make uh, a motion. Uh, uh, we have obviously a change here on the planning board. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Bond. No, no, we're, 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 not, we're not done with this? No, no. Oh, we had another one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. There I was going. Well, anyway, I think you know what I'm going to say, and I'll say it later, or someone else can say it. Okay, so uh, what's that? What are we doing here? We are. This is for final. Conditions are uh, Jane. I did. Right. Mr. Mandel made the motion. Jane Slavin has two. No. Sorry, Miss. I'm sorry. What did I say? Mandel. Oh, sorry. You guys are close. 
Uh, highway has two. And that's it. Cheryl. That's it, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mabrino. I don't have those other comments, so. What do you want to Two votes. Uh, one for final, one for special permit. Sure so we can we can move on final. Then we have to do give us grant a special permit. So I made the motion for final conditions. Well, can we vote on that? Or is it that special permit? Right, so we'll close out the. Uh, Final site plan. So you need to need second. A second. Yes. So then you have to say you need a second. I need a second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now you need a motion now for a special permit. I need a motion for a special permit. I need a mo I'll make the motion for a special permit. I need a second. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. So now he's looking at that. I believe he is. Anything else, Rob? Final was granted on July 26th. Continuing I mean, granted on May 24th. Preliminary was granted on July 26th. Uh, can be advertised for final if granted hardship status by 10, which it was in July. February 8th. Uh, yeah, we have a subdivision. Yeah, 
Yeah. Post for a special permit? Right. Okay. They mentioned 814 in the decision. I made a motion to grant them a uh, special permit. Okay. I made the motion. Mike seconded. Mike seconded. We were waiting for you to say it was okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Jesse. Oh, she gave us a revised letter? She did? Yes. That creep. She took it out? Um, oh, I don't know. I think she took it out. Next up, we have Linen Choice Site Plan for final site plan review. Um, it was brought to our attention this evening that this property was no longer under uh, ownership of Aloof. That is correct. It was. Uh, Tight was transferred about a month ago. Can you speak into the mic, please? Oh, Tight was transferred about a month ago. It's owned strictly by Linen Choice right now. Aloof has nothing to do with it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Burner. Could we get him to explain what's going on? Yes. Uh, Linen Choice site plan PB 18 uh, 10, final site plan review. Mr. Burner, can you yes. give us okay. an overview? Um, Originally, they were contract purchases. Uh, they prepared all the drawings. They, we received preliminary approval from your board. We got uh, variances from the zoning board. We made certain modifications to the, to, uh, the loading areas. Certain uh, loading areas are internal, which the zoning board asked for, which my client agreed to. Uh, we went to ACABOR that was approved by ACABOR. Uh, we are now here uh, for final. And uh, we did provide the necessary information disclosing who the new owners are. Mr. Garvey, please start reading the uh, comments, please. The PRC has no additional comments. Bruce Peters, no comments. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Jane. Bruce Peters, yeah. Jane Slavin, no comments. Bruce Peters, 12. Rocker County Department of Planning, five. Rocker County, okay, so there's two letters in here. We've, oh, one was revised, so they, that's five. Rocker County Health, two. Uh, the revised one has five. The okay. county planning. Yeah, they took one of them out. I said okay. that. Yeah, five. All right. 
And then uh, Rockland County Health uh, received, this is supersedes it, I guess. It's one, not two. Okay, Cheryl? Only one from health. And that's all I have, Cheryl. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. We'll pull the board now, Mr. Garvey. Uh, I have no comments, right? No comments? Right. Are we doing this the right way? Yeah. I have no comments. Mr. Dell. Yes, uh, my main comments occur for what's happening on sheet six of 22. Uh, and the previous time I hold saw on, this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let her okay. get that up there, please. It's okay, that's all right. Uh, can you focus in on the area near the, uh, uh, right, that area right there. Could you focus in on that a little closer? Okay. Right now, from what I'm seeing, that's within about 40, disturbance is occurring within 40 feet of the property line. You have quite a bit going on there. I don't understand why you've uh, done so much grading. I think that 40 feet could be increased to 60, and if you were to do that, then I think there'll be substantially more privacy, et cetera, for, the, your, for your neighbors to the north. So part of the amendment that we made to the plan after going to the zoning board to enclose the loading docks, we also rotated them 90 degrees, um, which allowed us, I think one of your comments from the original planning board meeting was to kind of reduce the truck turnaround area there. Yes. So we were able to do that. Um, right now we were just showing it graded out um, at three-on-one slopes, but we can certainly condense that and put a small wall in. Um, exactly. To, to, to so having 60 maintain. feet, let's say a minimum, would not be a problem for you? I don't think so. You don't think, or you, if okay, that well, would you're be- you're gonna have, right, I mean, this is- yeah. Well, the other boards, right, other members right. here are gonna have their own view. But for sure. mine, it was something I'd commented on before. It's not a major, uh, in terms of your overall project, a major condition but I think it would make a very big difference to the people to the north of you. So yeah. I myself am very emphatic that that be increased to a minimum of 60 feet. Other than that, it looks like you've done a good job on many parts of this. I know it's been a sort of a difficult site and no one's ever gonna be happy with it. I noticed you did put landscaping along the rail trail. But uh, my main concern on this is protecting the contiguous properties to the north. Thank you very much. Mr. Sweeney. Um, I, d I definitely appreciate uh, the move to enclose the loading spaces. I have a question possibly for Jane here. I'm looking back at your comments from the last time, um, December of 17. There's a comment, a comment number eight about all notice of violation need to be resolved. Were those resolved? No, they haven't been. They have not been resolved yet. Think we can, we can, the but, so we can still go to final even though they have violations outstanding. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Mr. Mendel. Thank you. I concur with Mr. Dell. 60 feet with the wall should definitely be uh, a condition put in there to move further away from the uh, property lines. I know it's near landscaping. It seems you put uh, along your edging, it's all large trees, anywhere from eight to 14, 15 feet, which I think we had asked for last time. I think that makes a difference. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, uh, what's the story with, the, uh, with that stream? Uh, is it going to be piped, not piped? Uh, and if it's going to be piped, do we uh, apply for a water uh, cost diversion permit from the town board? So um, it leaves the uh, town system on the uh, north plan, to the, on the property to the north. We have to bring it over to the side of the uh, access road, but mm -hmm. then we are keeping it as a stream along the, uh, along the side by the rail trail. So there'll be the rail trail, the landscape screening, and then the stream, and then the road, and then some additional landscaping in the islands that was requested by Akabor. Once it gets down towards the bottom, we'll have to 
pick it back up in a pipe to bring it over to the other side of the site. But we, we opened up as much as possible. The stream's not being moved. Okay, but... Uh, so you point, point, correct. Okay, it doesn't need, it's not going to be moved in any amount of shape or form. Okay. Now, uh, the runoff water, everything is flowing into the uh, stormwater uh, quality system and Correct. treatment? Correct. So there, we have pre-treatment for, we have uh, essentially four areas of stormwater treatment on the site. Um, one is down on the southern portion. Uh, one is in this central parking lot. There's another one on the north side of the parking lot here and then on the uh, east side of the project as well. So okay. depending on, obviously the size of the roof is pretty big to go from one side to the other, so we kind of have it split up with the roads and going to the, uh, the various points, but they all have pre-treatment and, and water quality. Okay, uh, regarding the water runoff from the roof or anything, uh, water is a uh, scarce thing, and we've had uh, fights with Orange and uh, with uh, Suez. Uh, we're going to use any of that water, recycling any of that for watering of the uh, your shrubs, your grounds. Has any thought been put into that? Um, we aren't using it specifically for irrigation purposes, um, but it will be going into before it goes into two of the detention basins. It does go to two bioretention areas, which primarily function through infiltration. So we'll be kind of returning to the groundwater in that aspect, and and. You know, feeding the plant life that are that's okay, so, those. Yeah. So you're gonna use the rain gardens, in other words. Right. Okay. And just a, a couple of questions a little further. Um, all right, with the traffic evaluation study, it was brought up again in one of the uh, things. Uh, it was rated as a C in one report and an F in another report. Uh, could you clarify? Yeah, we had addressed this during preliminary, right, um, but, but the, the latest traffic data has it as a level of service C at the intersection with Route uh, 303, which is unchanged by this project. Okay. Was that uh, done by any uh, traffic engineer on yeah, that? Yeah, uh, John Collins from, from my firm okay. did that report, and right. it's on file. Right. And uh, just one other thing to clarify. Let me see. Rockland County planning doesn't seem to, they keep changing things. Uh, have you uh, contacted Suez regarding uh, Rockland County? I think it's the, the latest one, the revised report number three. Yeah, we've, so we have to get a, um, a permit for new service from them for the building. So we've already started that process, so they're reviewing our application now. They haven't provided any comment as an adjacent neighbor since they own the uh, parcel here, um, but they don't have any comment on that aspect. We will meet all of their requirements for service and permits and meters and all of that. Okay. Uh, no further questions this time, but reserve the right to ask them after public comment. Thank you, Mr. Mendel. I have no comments. Uh, we'll open it up for the public. Please come up, state your name, your address. Uh, you'll have three minutes. Allison Sullivan, 42 Arthur Street, Blauvelt. Good? Thank you. All right. Uh, my first question is, how many trucks per day additionally will be coming into this area? Um, and then how can there be no change in traffic when there's additional trucks? Can someone just explain that process, like how they grade that system? I'm, I'm not familiar with that. But really, <clears throat> I'm asking the board tonight to delay approval of this project based on the fact that results from TRC air testing was not known in July 12th, 2017, when they received pre-approval from the planning board. The town board hired TRC to test the air emissions based on odor complaints in the area where Linden Choice is seeking to build. Those tests are concerning and should not be ignored. 
I'm not a scientist, but would like to submit a letter that was submitted to the board November 28, 2017 about this subject. I just want to read a small portion of it. This was a uh, letter submitted, a sci scientific statement submitted to Orange Town Town Board and read into the record by James Ross on November 28, 2017. James Ross is now part of the new uh, Air Advisory Board of Orange Town. And um, I'm gonna submit this, but I'm just gonna read part of it. Evidence for the need for additional investigations from a public health perspective in response to documented community complaints of symptoms and smells Canister sampling of ambient air was done by TRC, including both 24-hour and two-hour community-based sampling. Several exceedances of state and federal guideline criteria were documented in the sampling campaign. Repeated exceedance of such guidelines indicates need for further sampling to determine the extent of pollution and exposure of residents to toxic compounds. The subset of two-hour community air samples that were reported in the TRC November report had an average acrolein value of 3.1. I'm not familiar with the measurements. I'm going to submit it to you, which exceeds New York State DEC short-term guideline concentration of 2.5. Altogether, nine of the 22 TRC samples exceeded the short-term guideline concentration for acrolein. Several of the 24-hour measurement for acrolein and three other VOCs, benzene, carbon tetrachloride, and hexachloride butadine, were above the New York State DEC annual guideline concentration value. Specifically, at least 68% of the 22 TRC samples taken from August to October exceeded the AGC for acrolein. The other 32% of the samples may well have also exceeded the AGC. We don't know because they were below the detection limit. <clears throat> have also exceeded, oh, given that there are few, if any, other measurements of these compounds in the area, these measurements are current, our current best estimate of annual levels. Thus, the pollution level in Blauvelt is concerning from both the point of view of the AGC and SGC. Acrolein was on average 20 times higher than the CDC's Agency for Toxic Substances Disease Registry Minimum Risk Level. I'm going to submit the rest, but in conclusion, and I'm also giving you a forum about acrolein. Um, to ignore this information, in my opinion, would be irresponsible. Further testing of air, soil, and water should happen before any new construction occurs, especially when you have homes, a church, a college, a preschool, only feet from the site. To add more pollution from tractor trailers going in and out would only add to the already elevated levels, especially from acrolein. And that's really all I have to say. I hope you take this into consideration and read these materials before you make a final decision. Would anyone else like to speak? Heather Hurley, 202 Hobart Street in Pearl River. Um, I just had um, one or two questions, just in reference to what Mr. Sweeney was referencing before. Can someone please explain what violations that you were talking about and whose violations were being discussed on page some, a page that you have that was referenced? Jane Slavin. Okay, so they, you, you ask her to finish the questions and then she can answer after she's done. Okay, that's it. So if you can please address that, what was the exchange that just happened before? Thank you. Watch it later. Would anybody else like to speak? We'll close the public portion. I make a motion to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Mr. Burner, would you like to address? Yes, I would. Questions, please. Yes, question number one. Uh, this project has received negative declaration, seeker approval. Uh, there is not an air pollution problem involved. This is strictly a warehouse. Uh, there has been no problem in terms of a drainage problem, in terms of an air pollution problem, or anything of that sort. The problem in that area is levied against the former owner of the land or the former owner of that factory. This, this, this particular owner strictly is building a warehouse. He's received all his approvals. He has received approval from every agency. And uh, there is no evidence at all to say that this problem will, project will in any way 
pro present any kind of a problem to the public. That's why we've got all our approvals. Uh, as related to the violation, this was a violation which was levied by some kind of believed some debris that was along the railroad right away. I think it's been there for many, many years. Uh, the new owner will have to clean it up. And that's going to be his situation. He'll have to clean it up before he's able to build the project. I've seen the debris back there. And again, if someone would like to see them, they can always submit a foil and request that information. And Ms. Sullivan's question about the truck traffic, how much, how many trucks? Uh, so that, that was also answered during preliminary, um, but at maximum build out full, you know, future projections, it was 12 to 15 trips total per day, which is in and out. Commercial. I think the question as an, if Ms. Sullivan wants to come up and clarify, but I think what she's asking is, how do you how do you say that oh, it's not going to increase traffic if you're putting new trucks coming in and out? So the way that traffic is determined, each um, level of service represents a time span that it takes for someone to make a movement at an intersection. So each level of service, A, B, C, D, just like grading uh, in school, uh, gives a window. So what was studied as part of the intersection is really the exit here, Glenshaw Street onto 303. And right now, <clears throat> with the amount of traffic that's currently coming out of Glenshaw Street onto 303, it is within the level of service C window, which I believe is somewhere from 30 to 40 second delay. But the increase of these trucks, which I said are 12 to 15 spread throughout the day, really when you break that down in the hours of operation is only one extra truck trip a day, so it only adds another second onto the queue at that spot, so it's still within that level of service C description, so it doesn't change. It. In, a, in effect, it has no impact. Now, if it was a significant increase, and that, and that traffic study was done using industry standards for a warehouse of this size, <clears throat> the actual numbers that the uh, applicant and end user has fall far below the projections that are used for the industry standard because of the nature of their business. They're just uh, warehousing. You know, there's no manufacturing going on. It's not a production area, so it's just storage. So there isn't that high number that the standard usually equates for a building of this size. It's less than even that. So even if it was used as a, a full functioning warehouse production manufacturing, it would still only be level of service C because it just doesn't move the needle that much. Thank you, Mr. Coakley. Okay, so we've got to ask for a uh, Yes, Mr. Mendel. Still a couple of clarifications. Uh, with the tractor trailers, when they pull into your loading docks, do they drop the trailer and leave? Uh, that's typically what happens. They are kind of the uh, containers that get left. You see they look like shipping containers. They get put in. Now they'll be enclosed, and then the truck, the tractor part will, will leave. And then at the end of the day or the next day or, you know, two or three days, I think is what we had in the narrative, um, they would come back to be picked up towards, towards the end of the day after they get unloaded and then loaded back. Okay. And the other trucks that will be going in and out, and you mentioned box trucks in the prior, uh, I think in the preliminary, you talked about the box trucks. Yeah, so they also, in addition to being, um, you know, a wholesale provider of these items, they also um, uh, are a manufacturer, or it's not a manufacturer, a warehouse, excuse me, for um, some of the large retailers. So some of those delivery trucks are, are more like box trucks that would, that would pull in and load up and then leave. Okay. Now, as far as the uh, products that you have there, because uh, it's, it's manufacturing, specifically what will be done to, to goes within manufacturing, so, just to clarify. Yeah, we just put that in there because occasionally if a package gets ripped, 
they would just need to perform manual uh, repairs, sewing. That's it. Okay. That's it. And no dyeing, no, no chemicals. Dyeing, no cleaning, no chemicals, no no processes okay. like that. Okay. And uh, any uh, exhaust from the uh, the storehouse itself, other than no, just uh, truck and then heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. I think they will have to because the loading docks will be enclosed. Um, those specific areas will need to meet code because obviously a truck indoors has its own, um, but that will all be complied with through the building department, building code, all of that. Okay. And you're going to uh, try to make sure that the uh, truckers, when they pull in there, that they turn their... Uh, that they have off. to be compliant with the right. no island law in Rockland County. Correct. Right. Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay thank you. That's it. What do we move make forward a motion. Here? Make a motion for final. With I'll make conditions. the motion for final with conditions. Bruce Peters, 12. Rockland County Planning, 5. Rockland County Health One. That's all I have. Yeah. Suggestion in there. Go ahead. The um, twenty feet. Sixty foot. Yes, uh, there be uh, no disturbance within sixty feet of the center portion of the northerly proper northern property line. So now I'm talking about the area where the uh, drainage is. Okay. Mr. Understood. Uh, we can good with that, Mr. Cole. Uh, yeah. Yes, Mr. Slim. Well, if they could do it that way, they could rip wrap it. It's up to them. Yeah. I mean, if, even if it's less than four feet. Um, I mean, we could we could do it probably if we reduced the slope and did slope stabilization. Exactly. That would probably be the way we can do it. Yeah. Whatever way you wish to. Accomplish it. Okay. Understood. Rip wrapping would be fine. You know, you don't have to go to Gabbians or anything else. Just sure, we can do that. Yeah. We need a second. We need a second. Second. Mr. Mandel seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. I'd like to make a motion for this board to commend Mr. Bruce Bond for, I think, two decades of service years. and uh, being with, uh, with us for many, many years. And also, I think we should also, in the same uh, motion, I think we should thank Mr. Garvey for his years of uh, chairing uh, the planning board of the town of Orangetown. Thank you. You have a second? Second. <laughs> You're holding. All right, any, anybody have a, what, what's the vote? Aye. Mandel votes no. Yeah, well you have to, you have to abstain. I abstain. Yeah, you have to. It concerns you. Conflict. I'm teasing Mike. <laughs> oh, I will if you want me to. <laughs> okay. Well, so what are we doing it. about other business? You gotta sit and do the other business.
comments. And the second one is a zoning text amendment. Um, again, by the town board is made. Uh, make it a special um, use permit uh, to permit um, mixed use to allow child daycare in the zone where Orange Road Tire and the LI and the zone will be as, a, um, as part of mixed use uh, development. In the I'm sorry, special permit. Uh, I'm chairing. Is there, is there uh, any age uh, uh, on the child care centers? Is there any maximum age or anything to that in the definition of it? That's what I'm worried about. Cheryl, this gets. Mrs. Wait, 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 wait. Is it what is the latest what they're Absolutely. Absolutely. I have been doing a stew on this this particular thing since April 4th, 2015 when they tore down the went out. And here's the thing. This applicant, uh, Orangeburg Commons, came before the board requesting a, a, a strip mall of nine stores. I asked their lawyer what kind of <coughs> business would these stores have? And she said to me, well, we'll do a pizza and a nail spa. And I said to her, did you do any marketing? And she looked at me and walked away. Now they are back requesting uh, a, a child care center. I did the marketing. There's at least five daycare centers within a two and a half, three mile radius of this place. So, and not only that, but it's within 75 feet of the CSX. Has anybody been back there to take a look to see what that construction has done close to the CSX rail lines? I wouldn't send my kids there. I wouldn't send my grandchildren there, my kids there. You know, we talk about possible accidents, really disasters, and yet they're asking for a permit for this kind of thing. Think about this. That's all I got to say. Well, I'm not going to make comments if, so, if they're going to walk away. Yes, I mean, I don't know what you want Mary, to say. Mary, why don't you wait? They're referring to you for comments back to the town board. So do you have any comments you wish to make to the town board on that? No. Yeah, I do. This is what uh, was said there. It's, right, it's very close to the CX tracks. They uh, carry that uh, oil along there. Yeah, but that doesn't. I don't. But I don't understand why that's part of our why. Why we when we approved it originally, we approved it for a strip mall, nothing to do with the daycare centers but or anything. But if somebody wants to bring a daycare center in, then then that's up to them. That's why is that our responsibility? No, that's just my comment on it. I don't think it's a good idea there. That's okay, my and personal that's, comment. And, and that's great. I understand that. But, yeah. but but the thing is, is and I'm not trying to be confrontational. No. But why? 
what, we're, we don't have any say on who brings what into what. If, if the people, if, if, if grandchildren and children want to bring their kids there because they're close but to the But that's fine. They're that's asking fine. for a comment. This is not I the final decision. The board, where, makes, you know, the like board makes the decision. I'm just making a comment on it. Okay. Like I said, I, I, don't, I don't understand why. And that's you my know. personal comment on it. Well, does the board want to make a comment on it? I have none. It's a moot point because they're going to vote against it anyway. So. Okay. I don't see a problem either. No. No. I have no comments. We're okay. I need a motion. I make the motion to close. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 